Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman from Pittsburgh State University in the Department of Automotive Technology, and this is another micro lesson in air conditioning diagnostics. So what we're looking at today is a gauge readings on a vehicle that came into our shop that was um, complaining that it wasn't blowing cold air. So the vehicle was um, a used vehicle that an owner bought, uh, and they bought in uh, uh, the winter months, and then when it started to get uh, warm, uh, they turned on the air conditioning and it just wasn't blowing uh, very good cold air. And so um, what we can see with the gauge readings is that this is an orifice tube system and the vehicle was now fully warmed up and my low side gauge is reading right around maybe uh, 38 uh, PSI and my high side is reading right around maybe uh, 130 PSI. And so with an orifice tube system, I expect the, uh, the system to be maybe between 20 to 40 PSI, which it's there. And with a fully warmed up system, I'd expect the gauge readings to be above 150, maybe around 150 to 200. Um, so, so the high side gauge reading is reading a little bit low. And the low side gauge reading is probably reading a little bit high for a mild day. And so the vehicle um, in question here, um, uh, the shop temperature was, uh, was 65 degrees and it was only blown out 50 degree air. So only a 15 degree difference between the, uh, the, uh, the uh, ambient temperature and the uh, air coming out of the AC system. So that's not very good. Something else that was noted on this vehicle is that when we first started it up with the engine be, being cold, these gauge readings were about the same as what the, we see right here. So so the high side was, you know, reading kind of low. And and what was odd is that normally on an orifice tube system, when you first start the vehicle up cold, you would expect the, uh, expect the low side to get down below. 20 PSI, the system would uh, cycle off and on until there was enough heat load to uh, keep it, um, keep the clutch running continuously. And again, that never happened. So, so, so right away, there was concerns that there was a problem with this vehicle. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this video so we can kind of watch what happens. And so throughout this video, I'm going to turn the air conditioning off at the switch inside the vehicle. And what I want you to watch is I want you to watch the equalization time. That's the time that the uh, after the clutch turns off and the compressor turns off, that the low side and the high side equalize to each other. Now, on an orifice tube system, it should take around 60 seconds to maybe a minute for the system to equalize. And while it's equalizing, we're hearing that hissing sound uh, from the high pressure going through the low pressure through that orifice tube. And so, so we kind of expect that. And so we're going to watch and see what happens um, when we uh, do that on this particular vehicle. Uh, when I look at these gauge readings, uh, you know, uh, really I would consider the low side to be a little bit um, on the high side of normal, and then again the high side being a little bit low. And so, so even if if this was a TXV system, uh, these gauge readings would indicate maybe a possible TXV stuck open. So, so again, uh, these gauge readings are similar uh, in problem between an orifice tube system and the TXV system. Up oh, there we go. So we just turned the AC off at the switch. If you notice, it's equalizing very fast. Uh, it's going to equalize in about 10 seconds, and that is way too short for an orifice tube system. So we're going to kick the system back on in a little bit, let it stabilize, and then we're going to turn it off again just to get a couple of different uh, times of equalization to make sure that our, um, that our times are consistent. So these gauge readings that you see here where the... Um, where, where the low side is, you know, a little bit high and the high side is a little bit low. That also is the same gauge readings for a bad compressor. So, so, so many technicians may think, oh, wow, it's, it's a weak compressor here. So anytime I get these type of gauge readings where I, I consider the low side high and the high side low, I'm going to first um, check my orifice tube or my TXV to make sure that there is a restriction in the system, that it's not um, stuck open. And so... And so what probably happened here is that this compressor looked fairly new and, um, and the orifice tube was missing. And so, uh, you know, it, it, this, this owner bought the vehicle used, so who knows who worked on it before they bought it. But, um, you know, technicians get distracted all the time in the shop. Uh, they start a job and they don't finish it until the next day. They get pulled off a job uh, because maybe there's a customer waiting. Maybe they have to wait on parts and they just get distracted. And, 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 and on this particular scenario, the orifice tube just didn't get in. Either it was a mistake or maybe the technician just wasn't um, very good on what they had to do for this repair. Bottom line is that I, I, I've actually seen this more than once uh, out in the shop. 
And so, so it was a fairly easy diagnostics. What threw the, uh, uh, my students off the most is that when they felt the, um, felt the liquid line after the condenser, it felt kind of cold. So they thought there was maybe a, a restriction in the uh, condenser. But then when we checked the temperature uh, uh, at the orifice tube itself, uh, we realized that the orifice tube, um, that there was no temperature difference whatsoever, that the, um, th that the temperature between the, um, the front of the orifice tube of the liquid line and, and then after the orifice tube both felt kind of temperature uh, drop whatsoever. And so we actually measured the temperature with the thermocoupler and it was 50 degrees before the orifice tube and it was 41 degrees after the orifice tube. So, so right away we realized, hey, there was no um, orifice tube in the system. Now, if you run the vehicle f very long under this condition, with there being no restricted uh, restriction, you're actually uh, flooding the evaporator. And so if there's not enough heat load, there's a possibility of liquid a uh, refrigerant filling up the accumulator and going to your compressor and again it could damage the compressor uh, when we when we measured the lines uh, the actual suction line going to the accumulator it was about 34 degrees so so there was definitely a refrigerant boiling in that um, line it was boiling in the um, evaporator but the line coming out sorry boiling in the accumulator but the line coming out of the accumulator going to the compressor the suction line that was only about 50 degrees. So, so I felt confident that, that there was no, um, liquid getting to the compressor, that the, that, that the accumulator was doing its job, which was protecting the, um, the, uh, protecting the compressor. But again, this is just one vehicle, one system. And again, if you run in the vehicle like this for a long period of time, you could possibly be damaging the compressor by, um, putting liquid to the compressor and it, it won't be able to pump that for a long period of time. So hopefully you know more a little bit about uh, what the gauges will look like uh, if you have a missing orifice tube or a, um, a, a TXV that is uh, stuck open. This is Professor Scott Norman. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for some more automotive educational type videos, uh, please subscribe to my Professor Pintain YouTube channel. Thank you very much. You have a good day.